This video will explore a really exciting new meta-learning algorithm for generating the data set that's used to train classifiers like CIFAR-10 and MNIST classifiers. The data sets that are produced from these generative teaching networks don't resemble real images, but they're still able to train good classifiers when the classifiers have been trained exclusively on the data points sampled from this generator. This, these data sets are also optimized to train the networks really fast. So this is a great speed up for neural architecture search. So shown here is neural architecture search where you have this bottleneck of you propose the uh, neural architectures in the search algorithm, but then you need to train these child networks on the original data set. So the idea here is that these data sets from the generative teaching networks are optimized so that you can train these child networks in neural architecture search as fast as possible. And that way you can iterate on your neural architecture search more times and search through more architectures to find the best architecture. There are a lot of meta-learning algorithms that try to take apart pieces of the way that neural networks are trained and then control these and optimize them. This includes things like searching for different activation functions, neural architecture search, and then things like the meta-initializer and things like uh, you know trying to learn optimizers and all this kind of stuff. But none of these meta-learning algorithms have really tried to tackle this problem of generating the data set used to train the classifiers. So the way that this works is similar to a generative adversarial network and that you have this generator that is sampling from noise. So this noise vector Z may come from some kind of uh, predefined distribution like a unit Gaussian distribution and it's sampling the noise and the generator is turning this noise into data points that are then used to train the learning network on the task of uh, this generator's data. So this data is produced and it comes with its own label as well. So the generator is producing data, labeled data, that is used to optimize these networks in this inner loop where they're both optimizing each other because the generator is optimizing its parameters to produce better data for the learning network. And then this inner loop is evaluated on the outer loop of the real data, so the real CIFAR-10 and MNIST data. And then this is the way that it's optimized, such that you have this meta-learning algorithm that is learning teach, learning to produce a data set that can be used to train these uh, classifiers for MNIST and CIFAR-10 classification. So the other idea here is that you have faster training. So in the paper, they describe how they set these 32 batches of 128 images. So they're, they have 4,096 different uh, you know, samples in the data set at the end of this, and it's optimized to try to train it as quickly as possible. So the idea of having this way of training the child network as quick as possible is really useful for neural architecture search. And this is because, shown here, this is like the main idea of the paper and the main application they present is that you can quickly evaluate the search architecture. So there's been a lot of techniques to try to speed up that bottleneck in the neural architecture search of training and evaluating the proposed architecture. So some of these ways are like weight sharing, the graph hyper networks, things like hyperband where you're doing the different resource allocation. But the idea here is that you're training on this synthetic data that is optimized to train it quickly. So you can quickly evaluate the architectures and quickly iterate on the neural architecture search algorithm. Another remarkable characteristic of this study is that samples generated by the generative teaching network to teach CIFAR-10 and MNIST are unrecognizable despite being effective for training. So particularly shown here in the case of CIFAR-10, these images are like, they look like complete nonsense when you look at them. At least in the MNIST, you can sort of make out some digits, although you still see some of these images are just like completely, maybe not completely random because they are optimized for this task. But it's really interesting to see that these images, that they look like this, although they're able to train these classifiers to achieve really high accuracy metrics on the original data sets. This generative teaching network framework seems very useful for a lot of things in training neural networks, especially as a data augmentation algorithm. But particularly, the authors are going at neural architecture search and showing how this can be applied to sort of reduce this bottleneck of training the child network. So shown here from the neural architecture search with reinforcement learning paper is this idea that you have the controller network, which is trained with reinforcement learning to design neural networks. But the problem is every time you, you, know, you design your neural network, you then have to evaluate it. So you sample this neural network and then you have to train it on the original CIFAR-10 or MNIST data set. And sometimes this can take a really long time, especially in the case of say ImageNet, it takes a really long time to train this child network. So the idea here is that the generative teaching network is producing a data set that can quickly train this child network compared to training it on the original data set. Now we'll get into some of the details of how the authors make this work. So the first thing is that the data has to be learner agnostic for neural architecture search applications. So the idea here is that you have this learning network in the inner loop of optimizing the generator. And if you have the same learning network for every step of this, then you're gonna optimize the data set just for this one network. So the idea here is that they switch out this learning network in the loop of training their uh, generative teaching network, which is sort of this network here. And every time, so every time they do this and then they go to the outer loop to get like a signal from the original real training data set, they're gonna switch out this learning network with a different one. The next algorithm that they use to train these generative teaching networks is weight normalization. 
So the idea behind weight normalization is that the weight updates are instead going to the scalar parameter g and this vector v instead of optimizing the weight parameters directly. And they have this analogy to batch normalization that says that you should normalize long sequences of parameterized operations. And this chart sort of shows the effectiveness of their weight normalization technique. You see that you might imagine that this algorithm is really sensitive to different hyperparameters like things like the momentum update, batch size, all these kinds of different hyperparameters that come with an algorithm like this. And this idea shows that with the use of weight normalization, you have much less uh, variation, also better validation loss. But without weight normalization, you have this massive variation of the performance between different hyperparameters. The next idea that they explore for optimizing this algorithm is to use curriculum learning to order the way that the data points are presented to the classifier in order to train the classifier. So this idea is that you don't just give the data points from the generative teaching network to the classifier randomly, rather you have a fixed order in the way in which you're going to present your data to the classifier. So you see in this plot that the using the full curriculum variant of the curriculum learning algorithms they explore outperforms not having any kind of a structure to the way the data is presented to the classifier. The generator of the generative teaching network is sampling noise in order to produce these images that are used to train the classifier. So what it's doing is it's sampling these z vectors from some predefined distribution and then it maps these z vectors and a class label into x, the images used to train the classifier. So the idea here is that they're experimenting with different ways to sample z and produce the images and then present the order in which the classifier you know, sees them, updates its parameters, in, in this kind of a way. So the first thing they test is no curriculum where you're randomly sampling the Z vectors, sort of like the baseline control. Then they're looking at all shuffled. So you have a fixed set of the Z vectors. So you've chosen the images already that you're gonna to use to train the classifier, but there's no particular ordering to the images. Then shuffle batch is gonna be this idea of you learn 32 batches of 128 samples. So say the mini batch size is 128, and then you're gonna train with 32 steps of that mini batch size. So the idea here though, is that the order of the batches is still randomized. So you've learned these 32 batches, but there's still no order to the way in which they're presented to the classifier. Whereas the full curriculum learns 32 batches of 128 images, but it also has a structured order to the way that the batches are presented to the classifier. If you're interested in learning more about curriculum learning, I highly recommend this paper on the power of curriculum learning and training deep networks, where they explore a lot of different ways to order data in the way in which it's presented to the classifier to achieve higher performance. In their experiments with generative teaching networks and neural architecture search, they're gonna use a similar search space as this paper, Neural Architecture Optimization. So the idea here in neural architecture search is that you have a macro architecture that's defining the way that these normal and reduction cells are arranged in the overall neural network. So the neural architecture search is searching for these micro cells or these configurations of different operations like three by three convolutions or identity connections between input nodes in order to make up the cells that compose up the overall architecture. So within this space, there's a ton of different ways that you can connect these, a ton of different nodes that you can sample from in order to construct the normal and reduction cells. These plots show their results on neural architecture search. They say that after about eight hours of training the generative teaching networks, the data sets are able to train these models much faster than using real data shown in these plots. Another interesting algorithm that they compare this against is dataset distillation. I haven't had a chance to read the paper yet, but it looks like they're taking a very uh, similar approach to distilling the original information in the training set down to these 10 or 100 images. But I think a key difference is that they're not generating them from random noise as in the uh, generative teaching network. And I also think that they're deliberately focusing on having these data sets be as small as possible of 10 and 100 compared to sort of the approach of having these 32 batches of 128 images in the generative teaching networks. So these are some more of their neural architecture search results. You see how they get a better result on CIFAR 10 and this correlation that they use where they're correlating the predicted performance from these, this uh, training on the graph generated, uh, the generative teaching network data set with the real data. So basically what this is showing is that networks that perform well on the generative teaching network data set tend to perform well on the real data as well. This table further shows their results on doing neural architecture search with the CIFAR 10 data set. In this case, they're using a random search algorithm compared to something like reinforcement learning and, or like an evolutionary search. And they're using the search space from the neural architecture optimization paper where they're looking for this normal cell and the reduction cell. So they're comparing their results with the graph hyper network and the weight sharing, which are two other algorithms for doing the uh, you know, accelerating neural architecture search. But these algorithms could actually be stacked on top of generative teaching networks, which is something the authors talk about for future work, because you could use weight sharing to initialize the learning network as it's being trained in this loop with the generative teaching networks data. So it's also interesting to note the GPU days, days uh, speed up compared to training on the real data. So say you're training on the 50,000 image training set from CIFAR 10, you see that it takes much more time to be looping through that to search for different neural architectures compared to training on this you know, much smaller data set generated from the generative teaching network. Another interesting characteristic of these results is that they use cutout to improve the performance. So cutout is this data augmentation technique where it's sort of like dropout in the input space, 
where you're cropping out these patches of the images and then using this so uh, the uh, convolutional network doesn't overfit to certain patches of the image. So that was really interesting to see them using cutout on the generated data in this meta learning algorithm. Another really interesting direction for future work that the authors describe is to have dynamic curriculum learning. So the idea here is that the model has learned this curriculum, the order in which it's presenting data to the classifier, but you can imagine extending this further such that it's a reactionary curriculum. So it's you know, adjusting its curriculum based on how the learning algorithm is you know, learning. There are a lot of other ways of looking at meta-learning algorithms for data augmentation that I think you might be interested in if you're interested in this paper. Some of these are about using generative adversarial networks for data augmentation. So two papers I thought that I'd put up and recommend are this first paper, SimGAN. SimGAN is taking the images sampled from a graphics engine and trying to align them with the real data set by having this adversarial loss that's making the images better for training a classifier with. The classification accuracy score for conditional generative models is a paper that is looking at how well classifiers perform when they're trained on data sets generated from the big GAN and the vector quantized variational autoencoder 2 models. So both of these papers, they provide a really interesting you know, discussion around this idea of having meta-learning generative networks that are pr producing data for data augmentation and training classifiers. This quote from one of the authors of the paper is a really interesting thing about the potential of these kinds of meta-learning algorithms. Because generative teaching networks can generate virtually any learning environment, they also one day could be a key to creating AI-generating algorithms, sort of this idea of what an, al an algorithm that would be interesting if you let it run for, say, a million years, which seek to bootstrap themselves from simple initial conditions to powerful forms of AI by creating an open-ended stream of challenges, learning opportunities, while learning to solve them. So this paper, AI GAs by Jeff Kloon, a really interesting paper for thinking about these kinds of algorithms. Another really interesting paper similar to this is POET, Paired Open-Ended Trailblazer, Endlessly Generating Increasingly Complex and Diverse Learning Environments and Their Solutions. So what this is, is rather than generating a data set and sort of having this direct optimization process, it's looking at sort of evolving different environments, different you know, parameters that define this bipedal walking task environment, and then also evolving the agent simultaneously. So say the agent isn't so great at environment A, it can go and do environment B and sort of have this diversity that is this idea of having the you know, endlessly generating algorithm that's interesting as you just let it run on and on. Thanks for watching this overview of generative teaching networks, having a meta-learning algorithm that is generating a data set used to optimize classifiers. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.